Hey, I got a gripe with you guys. How can we keep asking for eight-day greenos and I don't play them? I got so many good ones lined up, but I never call in because I don't want to. I don't want to waste the time. All right, so start playing them. Then maybe I'll call in with good eight-day greenos. Thanks. Bye. Star Wars in it. Bye. Hey everybody, welcome back to Star Wars Minute. It's the daily podcast where we analyze, scrutinize, and celebrate the Star Wars movies one minute at a time. I'm Pete the Retailer from PeteTheRetailer.com. I'm Alex Robinson from AlexRobinson.fun. Hmm. And I'm Ken Plume from KenPlume.com, not dot .fun. Hmm. Not dot .fun. Dot, dot .com, not. Ken not. Plume, not. No, I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Now that we made it a bit, I'll see if we have to buy it. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But uh, yeah, thanks for coming back again, Ken. Um, I'm happy to be back. Thank you. We're up to minute 48 of uh, Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. Uh, 48 starts with Rey thinking that the caretakers don't like her. And it ends with Luke telling her that every sentence, every word in her sentence was wrong. Hmm. And uh, so we we get the line, you know, after Ray says, like, like, you know, get the feeling they don't like me. Or I I think I think they don't like me or something like that. I forgot. I can't imagine why. Yeah. And then him saying I can't imagine why seems like a very Mark Hamill line. I was going to say it seemed like a very um, Luke influenced by Han Solo kind of line. Right. But it definitely is a Mark Hamill kind of line. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, again. But I remember him being sarcastic back in the original trilogy. Does he get any right. real sort of sarcastic, like, driven humor lines in the original trilogy at all? Mm. Like, he gets sort of situational comedy where he's, a, like, sort of exasperated right. comedy in moments, but not, like, the driving... Like, he doesn't get punchlines. Right. Well, yeah, I'm thinking specifically of, uh, you know, Return of the Jedi, the, the, the kind of sitcom, you know, Return of the Jedi was filmed before a live studio audience scene, you know, where it's like, he's just the straight man setting up Han Solo's jokes. Yeah. For like, like Han. It's like, oh, what's going to, you know, like together at last. And it's like, same as always, you know, that whole, like, he's just totally setting up Han for the, for the punchline of like, you know, like that bad, huh? Like, yeah. Um, he, I don't think he does get any of them because he's, again, he's trying to be. I mean, even Leia gets comedy lines and comedy beats. Oh yeah. She right. gets a lot of them. Yeah. But Luke doesn't get any that's driven by him. They're reactionary comedy beats. Yeah. Right. Or situational comedy beats, nothing where he just gets to be, as you said, Mark Hamill. <laughs> right. And and so this is good, like you know, maybe that if you can if we can extrapolate and get meta a little bit, like Luke Skywalker without the force is Mark Hamill. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whoa. Like so Luke Skywalker cut off from the force is more like Mark Hamill. He's allowed to just be his, you know, his kind of uh, you know, goofy, fun loving self. Oh, I see. So the force, the force doesn't like like jokesters. But is this is this is what happens when they all just sort of become hermits. Because Obi Wan in the prequels or Clone Wars is super serious. No, right? he's joke. He's cracking around jokes all the time. He's not cracking jokes. He's he's telling jokes he thinks are funny, but <laughs> they're not right. But he's always like you know. Well, but by the negotiations time negotiations were short. A, right. a new yes, but yeah, they're all they're all they're, <laughs> they're all for all him. Snicker. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But he's like flat out just like I'm just a comedy being in yeah episode four, where he's just like oh mm-hmm, yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just Alec Guinness. Like he just can't. He just has an inherent kind of like makes everything seem like, you know, towing that line between this is silly and this is, you know. But Yoda awesome. the same way yeah. has gone full comedy. And Yoda was not comedy in the prequels. I right. mean, he was no. super somber, serious, well, meditative yeah. Jedi master. That's the, the, the force makes you serious. Force is also, no maybe, maybe part of it, I don't know, Luke is around people. Whereas Yoda and uh, I guess Obi Wan probably interacted with people sometimes, but I mean, Yoda, Yoda was didn't interact talking with anybody. To Qui-Gon. They were both talking to Qui Gon. Isn't that the whole also that whole point of being taught how to become a Force ghost? 
That's true. Yeah. Is it talking to Qui Gon for an extended period of time? Is what drove them nuts. <laughs> then they all, yeah, they all have to be funny because they're like, "Oh, that guy's so dry." Yeah. yeah. Oh, he just keeps telling us stories about being a Force ghost on the other side. <laughs> uh, talk he about something about, else. He says he's got a certain set of skills. I don't even know what that means. Yeah. He's a Jedi. We're all Jedi. We all have skills. What does he? <laughs> Doesn't everyone have a certain set of skills? No. Uh, he's learning an instrument now as a Force ghost, driving me <laughs> nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you keep busy? Just... Do you come up if you're a force ghost? Do you have, like find hobbies? You know, you're immortal now. Do oh, you hobby find didn't other turn into a force ghost. Do? No. <laughs> um, I'm assuming you got. I mean, you spend time studying. You know, getting more attuned to the force. We I mean, don't see you're any. Pretty uh... well attuned if you've become a force ghost. Isn't that sort of like the upper limit of <laughs> done it? What? It's like, you know, they keep adding tiers, adding levels to it. It's like Scientology. It's like, oh, no, no, no. You, well, once you get to Force Ghost, then you're, now you're at the alpha level and you have, you know, yeah. seven more iterations to go. Congratulations. You've taken your first step to becoming a Force Spirit. Right. And then, you know, so on and so on. And then it's just, you know. You have to Tom recruit at the top. three additional Force Ghosts. And right. They have to recruit. <laughs> Maybe that was, that's Qui-Gon's plan. He has to get three. Mm. Or or somebody like that that they have to get three Force Ghosts, which is why is at the, the force, end of Return of the Jedi, like, he's got Anakin and Obi Wan and Yoda, and he's like, "All right, I did I it. Made like, quota. <laughs> made quota. Now I can now I can have a physical form again." Yes. So I won I guess my it, way back. So I guess it's up to whoever the next person is to get Luke and Leia's Force Ghosts. They show up at the end. So uh, right, she needs one more. Seen. She I don't yeah. know. If yeah, she but knew they didn't that. get. He, she didn't get Ben. ben yeah. So how did she miss out on that? I maybe Kylo Ren could come back as a Force Ghost. That's what that's what he means by Ben. Does Qui Gon like send her a oh, very? Oh, you said Ben. I thought you meant. Oh, I think you meant old Obi Wan about her. You know, failing to get Ben. Yeah, the that dyad. could be. It would look too much like that. You know, like the family photo, like the Sears portrait studio. If they if they got Luke and Leia and Ben Solo at the end. Why Ray did we have like... all of the Force Ghosts? Why was that field not filled right. with dozens and dozens of? Force Ghost just going, I don't even know her. What are we, what? <laughs> that would have been a great scene in Rise of Skywalker to the, the, the have all, everyone all together. Like, oh, that's a, you look much much shorter than I expected. That's so when long, the musical really. numbers should have come in. That's yeah, exactly. the big single. Aren't you a little short for a Force Ghost? Oh, you, you know, like. <laughs> Put a little love in your heart. <laughs> right. I guess there'd be some awkwardness, though, because you do have Ghost Anakin roaming around and, you know, there'd right. be a lot of angry Jedi ghosts who are like, yeah, yeah, a lot of words ugh. to say with ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, Luke takes about? Luke takes uh, Ray into the uh, caves of. Uh, I guess it's really just a tunnel that goes up to the the top of the mountain there. Yeah, it's a good, uh, um, well, interesting. Good amount it's a of Jedi spares. overlook, right? Isn't the, <laughs> the the tourist the scenic view inspiration point? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the Jedi makeout point. <laughs> um. All these mating caretakers up there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then it, yeah, it just turns into American graffiti, but with with caretakers with the with frogs. <laughs> <laughs> with frogs, I would watch that. Um, they're they're so they yeah they climb up the stairs. We hear good porg sounds while they're doing that. Yeah, I just have to say, there's a character in American graffiti already named Toad. Oh yeah, so. there you go. <laughs> Sorry, George, I had to bring it. George had a long plan. Um, but, uh, once they get to the top, I was noting that that if Luke hadn't refused the call when, when Ray shows up, gives him the lightsaber, if he hadn't tossed it and been like, I'm not going to do this and had to be kind of convinced if he had, if she had shown up and be like, here's your lightsaber, I need you to train me. Here's where his story would have started. You know, it would have just been this and been like, okay, let's go to the top of the mountain. Lesson one. And it's a weird, like, like all that, you know, the first 47 minutes of his story, not, not that it's all him, but, um, you know, all, all the other stuff that's happened so far, which I've liked. All of the reluctant Jedi thing. Yeah. Where do you, if, if this film hadn't started immediately after the previous film, mm-hmm. where do you think we would have been dropped into Ray and Luke's story? I think this film should have started during the previous film. So we're just watching some of the same footage over. We're like, wait a minute. Didn't we just see this? No. I, that's what I mean. I think if, if it, we could. Like, would this been like, we've been dropped on the, here's the training. 
we the first time we see Ray and Luke in this film, they're in training. Right. You know, here the here's this conversation oh, where he's talking about the force with her. Right. Well, well, I think you have to establish that he does not want to go back, though. Like that's the whole gist of it is that regardless of him teaching her, he's not going to go back and be Luke Skywalker. Yes, with his the his, right his anti hero's journey, his journey yeah. away from. <laughs> But you could now, like, theoretically, if you excise this film entirely, because that we see the beginning of Rise of Skywalker starts out with Rey training, but with Leia. So if you had right. that. Um, Isn't that what Rey, Rise of Skywalker did was excise this film entirely? Well, you know, essentially. Um, I wonder, I like, you. you know, if you if you take that out and just have this, you know, have them start training she was training with luke at the beginning of that and then have if, if you could kind of weave that in there somehow and have you know if if, if not that i want to get rid of this movie but it would be an interesting story wise like what would you do if you were just jumping straight to that because I, I i feel like did that come up on the show the other day or was that something that i was just thinking about when i was daydreaming about star wars about. well you did that, just watch it recently so i did just watch probably. it recently but how a and again we'll get to this in two years but the um some of the you know complaints about the last the rise of skywalker is that it was crammed too full of things and it was manic because it was so like so if you had if you didn't feel like you had to wrap up the trilogy in one piece if you had had an episode 10 essentially that's going to wrap up the trilogy and then you had an episode 9 just to wrap up what what's going on here knowing that there's a 10 coming Mm-hmm. that could have um, uh, potentially alleviated some of that. But again, that's, but that's... also if we know that Luke is a force ghost and is able to manifest as a force ghost, why wasn't he just picking up the training with Ray? Right. As a force ghost. Is that, is that not allowed? Is there some kind of thing like you, there seems to be some kind of cap on like, cause Obi-Wan oh, was a force ghost too. Like the he... AOL cap. You only have a certain number <laughs> right, of yeah. minutes. With yeah. Cause, your force cause... ghost. Otherwise, Ben could, Obi Wan could have just shown up uh, and at Hoth and started training Luke immediately. But he ha- told Luke, "Oh, you have to go talk to Yoda." You know, right. so and just for uh, a couple so, minutes, he's like, "Yeah." Also, but none of them are great with responsibility. I no. think we've also seen. So it seems like there's probably a lot of no, you do it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what? <laughs> but yeah. Also, I'm I mean, too old for this. <laughs> I'm too dead for this yes. sort of thing. <laughs> um. There, you know, I. I, I, I'm going to go back to the idea of them having to swim there because if, you know, they, if, you know, Luke is, is just slowly swimming his way over to, uh, to, uh, I forgot the planet that they're on when they're, when they're training, um, when, when at the beginning of, of Rise of Skywalker, but he's just, he hasn't gotten there yet. Hmm. Well, yeah, he pretty much, well, but then, well, you, you know what happens? She went, um. Was he already waiting on Tatooine for the for the end? Well, but, oh yeah, there you go. Well, but don't forget he so he he dies on Octu, mm-hmm. and then immediately starts sending his Force Ghost out, and then Ray, of course, goes ever. back to Octu. So what happened is Luke swam halfway, and oh, then wait. was like, "I got to go all the way back to uh, Octu because remember he meets her. <laughs> you he went to the she... wrong place. Yeah. He oh. doesn't send his Force Ghost out. That's what I mean. He's he, it's there. Oh, so you're saying he didn't even leave until after that. Yeah, it it his force ghost is still there. Oh, okay. I thought it was already leaving to go meet up with no, Luke I, to I, train yeah. him. On, <laughs> I like the idea him. that we should have coordinated. <laughs> <laughs> he ran out of gas, so we had to go all the way yeah. back. <laughs> right. We need to talk more. <laughs> so, um, oh, well, it's one thing uh, we when they were going up the stairs, they passed the um, the ancient Jedi mosaic we see on the floor. Mm. Um, which, according to the Visual Dictionary, uh, depicts the prime Jedi in a state of meditation and balance. And um, if you look, the thing is half black and half white, mm-hmm. which would seem to indicate that the prime Jedi had the dark side and the light side in it. Um, well, but they're also so maybe in balance. Maybe, maybe they'll do something with that later on. Yeah, and well, that that again goes back to this is what what I what I believe what I believe. Um, you know, the balance of the force is being, is having equal parts, equal, you know, parts, dark side and light side and not being, they could be potentially, you Medium know, contained rare. within Medium. one. 
But so not being not being constricted or beholden or crippled by either one. That you, you yeah, and you, that... you keep it in balance, but you also don't, as the Jedi did towards the end of their time, denied right. Right. that emotion and connection and That's way out of balance stuff that they saw as temptation. Well, whereas because... they could have said, "Well, we can incorporate that and find a balance." That oh, maybe we don't go all killy, right? <laughs> and and <laughs> killy having you know like a couple thousand of those guys and and you know like two, um, two. Sith, Sith. You know, that, that's completely out of balance, which is why, again, I, I fully believe in the prophecy, and you know, Anakin did bring balance to the Force by eliminating it, so there were very few of each, and, and you know, the, the dark and the, and the light were more even. Yeah, but there were so many ways of getting around that rule of two thing. I mean, how many Inquisitors well, yeah. were there? How many? How many? But yeah. when, it, when it comes down to it, then, the, you know, there's also oh, a couple of more hidden Jedi and stuff. So it's, it's right. balance is restored to the force by, by eliminating the pure this all sounds like creative accounting. light side um, that was that was out there. So I, uh, I but this, also these th- films feel like they undermine. I, I don't understand when the balance was achieved. Like, what is what is that? When did it happen? It, what what was actually accomplished? Was it always intended to be a delayed thing? Like, oh. You actually didn't do it now. You maybe kind of did it in the future. This whole balance thing. Well, I have two. I'm of two opinions that either Anakin does it when he kills Always everybody. Always two. There are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So at Order sixty six. So basically, that the balance calling the of the Jedi was bringing balance. Right. So when why wasn't Palpatine get credit for being the one who restores balance? He killed. He ordered the deaths of way more Jedi than Anakin did. Yeah, but he ordered it, and Anakin kind of goes out and he helps everybody destroy. He's the he's the one. He's the catalyst that enables Palpatine to do that. Mm. Um, or then, if you extrapolate, take it even further, then in he's the one because he's the one, you know, because uh, he, he begets Luke who begets, you know, Luke and Leia who beget uh, Ben Solo, who is then establishes that dyad and to, to, so in, in basically funneling everything into Ray and Ray being kind of uh, uh, an internal dyad. She's got that kind of part of Kylo Ren still, and she's got the dark and the light within her. That could be a balance, but that's a stretch. So is bringing balance to the forest like maintaining like a bonsai tree? Is it just never ending and meticulous? And you're like, oh, well, that's out of place now. Oh, that's a no. They messed that up. Got to balance. Nope, that's... a little bit. Yeah. So, well, it's like so balance is never sustained. It's a little bit like flying a helicopter, though, because you you can't over adjust too much one way or the other. You have to like a oh, little, little tap. Okay, we're going back this way. It's not you know. So it's like. Trimming a bonsai tree on a helicopter. So we're agreed. I can that's totally exactly. see why Luke was like, I'm done with this. This needs to end. I can't maintain this. Stop giving me your bonsai yeah. tree. To- <laughs> <laughs> that's what the tree is. That's oh, why it's a tree. Right. What's well, the mighty Janetti tree that you got? He's like, I'm not going to maintain this tree anymore. <laughs> I'm going to burn it down because I'm tired of pruning it. So, uh, so Ray says to Luke, well, you have to come back and help us because Kylo Ren is strong with the Force and you're the right. only one who can defeat him. And, and is Kylo Ren really that much of a threat? Like, if he was almost close to being just blown up on Starkiller Base just because he just happened to be there when it got blown up. I mean, it would seem the massive fleet of the First Order is more of a threat than Kylo Ren, ultimately. Right, so it's weird that they're singling out Kylo Like, maybe it's just trying to do a personal angle for Luke. And there's Luke, still like, a Snoke. I mean, Snoke yeah. is still in play at this moment, so wouldn't he be the bigger threat yeah, to that's eliminate? What I would, I would yeah, but he's the more... He's got the raw power, right? Who? Snoke or Kylo Ren? Kylo Ren. Uh-huh. He's, he's the got whole... the power. I mean, right. do, does he? I mean, it took Snoke to make this connection. Well, so... that's what Snoke says. Snoke says... Of course, do, don't forget, we're not Snoke is working that for Palpatine. it's actually Palpatine mm-hmm. who's making this connection. Hmm. I thought it was Agatha Harkness. <laughs> um, oh, it was Palpatine all along. The um, it was Buzzini all along. <laughs> Sorry, wrong show. <laughs> um, glad you went there. I don't. I, I uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it it does seem kind of like a little blurb of unnecessary exposition to a certain extent too. That to get to the top of the stairs and she's like, okay, now 
we, I need you to train me in the force because Kylo Ren is the bag. It's almost like like reiterating the crawl or something like that. It's just Although like, is, she is like a couple of days into this. I don't know how much debriefing she's got on like the political and military yeah. standing of the galaxy as a whole. Right. To know Leia what just the probably told, gave him some talking points. Make sure you mention Snow. The only sure person she's Kylo encountered Ren. is Kylo yeah. Ren. Yeah. Who clearly has powers and is a threat that she knows about. Mm hmm. Uh, that's where I'm getting thrown by the whole compressed timeline of all of this. Like, it sort of makes sense that she has like half a grasp right, on what's going on. All she knows is I need to get you, Luke Skywalker, back to do something. Right. That is that is the goal that has been put in front of me. Plus, <laughs> I got this weird force crap. I don't know what's going on. Right. I was told you do. Tell me. <laughs> well, the which is why I like what her... Uh, when he, he talks to her, he's like, okay, so what's, what is the force? What do you know about the force? The force? And when, when she is like, all right, it's a, it's a, it's like a power that lets you control people and lift things, make, make things, things float. float. Yeah. Yeah. Which is exactly her experience with it. That the, it's yeah. great that she doesn't know exactly what you were just saying, Ken. Like she doesn't have the overall you know view that we have of the conflict or of her journey at, or of the knowledge of the force that we all have she thought the force was a myth and so she was like oh, i've got the force she just didn't know what it was she just thought it was weird things happening to her until um was was it kylo or was it maz Kanata that that first said the force to her and she was like the force and that the kind of it was kylo it was during the battle during the duel well she he, first hears about it with luke skywalk with uh, han solo the force, right? But then when she doesn't realize that that's what's happening to her right. until she's battling with Kylo and he says something yeah. about you know like the force and she's like the force that's what it is and then it kind of and so from her experience all she used it to to um you know tell 007 to to go do with himself and she used it to um you know to get the lightsaber out of from Kylo Ren so she used it to control people and to make things float and and she doesn't have very other a lot of other experience with it so she's like i don't know like what how am i supposed this to know what the force feels is feels like a very awkward like school force ed video that right. you, so this is the force these are the <laughs> strange feelings that you're feeling right now you're <laughs> right. reaching out you're making connections you're making things float what does it all mean we know it's a <laughs> weird confusing time for you right don't worry it's all normal and he's the, you know, the the embittered old coach who has to teach. <laughs> Force that would be great if you let her into the cave and then just turned on like a movie projector. And then yeah. just like, hello, I am Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> you may be wondering what's happening to you right now. <laughs> it's an energy field created by Confused all the things. you are. Beep. <laughs> things are happening to you. <laughs> um... Yeah, I, I really like uh, Daisy Ridley's reading of the line where she says Pow power that lets them control people and make things float. Like she yeah. she as it's almost like she realizes how ridiculous it is as she's saying it. Yeah. I think no, I, she's being forced really, to give a report in front of the class. Yeah. But like, this is a oh, good example really of reading of of humor that I think is organic to the thing and it's not jokes the way like, hey, tell Hux to his mother's on the phone. <laughs> you know, it's not like that kind of a humor. <laughs> it's 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 more from the character and stuff. So so I right. like it. Yeah, and it's how you would feel she would be in that moment, thrown into the deep end. Yeah. Right. A couple of days into, oh, yeah, there's the Force. It's a thing. <laughs> you also now out in the galaxy. You've basically yeah. been given a ship by your your dead half-a-day father figure that also gave you a, a blaster. Well, oh, that thing's a Wookiee. Yeah, I, uh, think, <laughs> I think it's Chewie's ship, and he's letting Ray use it. It's mm. like, you know. I don't um, think, no, nothing would have been given to Chewie. No medals, no ships, nothing. He gets. I don't nothing. think Wookiees tech legally can own anything. I think mm -hmm. everything is there. So. That's an that's an old imperial rule. <laughs> <laughs> um. So what if? So much like Empire, this movie um has the time distortion of someone being trained by a Jedi while other things are going on. That doesn't seem to match up with the overall. Um, because you have like a running starship running out of gas thing that is your ticking clock during yeah. it that doesn't make it seem like that much time has gone by yeah i think that's part of the issue so so she is trains this for happening, two days is this happening while what is happening on dakar and with the with the rebel ship right now are they are they right now 
in the middle of the chase or is the chase still far in the future? In I this? mean, it, it, it has to be all because she she is the linear bookend for both of these events. She leaves in the Falcon. Yeah. As they're evacuating because it's immediately after. It's actually before they evacuate, so we don't know how long it is. I mean, we assume it's immediately after the end of the movie that there's no reason why the First Order wouldn't start attacking them okay, immediately. Okay, so she's, they so, know where so they are, her so. bookend, okay, well, you, the one- We don't know how long it is between her leaving and then the Empire, the, the, right, the, the First one, Order attacking. The right. one thing that gives maybe a clue to time passage uh-huh. is, and of course, I don't know, I, I, I forget which one of you is not the hugest fan of the supplemental- Here's what things mean being in the comic books and, and novels. Mm. The Phasma, the Captain Phasma comic book series, details how she is able to escape from Starkiller Base, from like the garbage chute, uh-huh. and get off. So there's a time passage of that, mm-hmm. of being able to get all those people off. So that's at least a couple of days to a week. Of for, time passage from when? So when does that start? Starting the Captain now. the Phasma from as soon as she's dumped in the garbage chute. From there, it's a couple of weeks until they leave Starkiller Base. No, 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 no. It's a couple of weeks until you get to the catch-up point of her being on. Oh, so the... we don't know how long. We don't know how long she was there before. Right. Yeah, I right. see. But anyway, I, but, so, they, but they knew where the rebel base was because they were targeting it. So I can't imagine that that yeah. that fleeing. So maybe it's not even that because they it's, they would have immediately gone after where the rebel base was because that was what Starkiller Base was intending to destroy when it was yeah. destroyed. And you think if anything they or would have had their eyes out to try base. to catch the Falcon, which they you think they would have tried to catch it when it was leaving the So car. then it goes back to the real time aspect of maybe with a little bit of wiggle room of a day, mm-hmm. let's say. Yeah. So she essentially trains to be a Jedi for let's be generous 3 days. <laughs> well, 4 three days. Act, that's 3 act 2 days. So we don't know how long those days are. Maybe right. they're slightly long. <laughs> I just know it's it matters how long the other days are cuz uh and also but how that long slow, that slow ship chase because we also have everything up <laughs> the I'm assuming everything on Canto Blight takes place in a night. They arrive, do their thing and are out there they go same to jail, night. and then they leave that night. Yeah. Yeah. You know you know what they say? Everything in Canto Blight takes place in one night. Uh-huh. <laughs> um Oh, I, it's not dissimilar from, again, going back to Empire Strikes Back, which this is supposed to be a, a, you know, corollary to, you know, how long did Luke train with Yoda? How long, you know, compared with how long were, were Han and Leia and C-3PO and Chewie kind of floating yeah. in the asteroid field and then driving, you know, slowly with the windows down to the Anoet system? You have a little wiggle room, though, because we don't, they didn't have light speed, so we don't know how long it took them to get from the asteroid field to Cloud City. It could have taken right. them three months, which case Luke was training for three months. Right. Three and change. But so we don't know. But the but the I mean, other time the other one has a specific we have eighteen hours to save the Earth. We have eighteen hours before the ship is out of fuel. So that sets the timeline much cl- it gives us a right. firm but timeline. I, I, so. Well I think that yeah. then, you know, the wiggle room is in between episodes where it's not just one to one like we did it. Oh, here comes the dreadnought. You know, it's like there's there's a little bit of but that that wiggle room does maybe gives you a day it would seem in all logic knowing that the base is there right they're not going to allow a lot of time for them to bug out but your your forces were just reduced significantly so you might might have to regroup and be like okay let's what are we going to do okay we're going to get everybody let's go let's go get that rebel base where do we see kylo ren in his healing process because that's another way to gauge time. Right. We also know how long back to healing because Finn also was healing up. Right. Yeah. In and that also, time. you know, the surgical droids. None of this makes sense. <laughs> this is all baffling to, look at it that to me. <laughs> it was well, a weird decision, but it was really the. It, I on if it had meant making a little more sense out of all of this, I would have cut the Luke scene from the end of Force Awakens Hmm. just had her going off to look for Luke 
that and works then, and then now, we pick but... back up with last jedi at some point later she's found him or she's training with him or or you know she's finally found him there's been a yeah. little bit of time to where you could have that wiggle room there that locking it all in like that with a scene that is so much yeah here's your handoff you're gonna have to pick up this baton <laughs> right yeah well as a yeah. beat it's it's i think alex what you were just starting to say it's like you can't have you couldn't have like hey we're doing star wars again without saying mark hamill's gonna be in it you yeah because it would be i don't know i mean you could artistically you could but just as far as like an event and as far as what people wanted you know they could have worked him in some other way, a hologram, you, well, you, something like that. But you like could that. have just not had the meeting between him and Ray. It could have just been a shot of him on this planet you don't know, standing right. on a hilltop, gazing at the distance. And it would mm -hmm. have had, honestly, as much, Pretty much, the as, same much impact, of it, yeah. uh, as much as he was in it. Yeah. Because he had no dialogue in that end scene either. Yeah. Mm. So just have him like, he's out there. You can find him. He's not dead. He's alive. He's findable. I mean, and you saw him. him. Like yeah. Here I am. Yeah, yeah, come find me now. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Luke we Hunt. have more. We have more Ray Luke fun tomorrow. Yeah. Wait. I, let me see if I have one. Uh, no. Porg sounds. That was the other thing we already we already talked about that. Um. This. Uh, can you? Uh, uh, can. Uh, can you? Can you come back tomorrow? Keep keep going with us. I would love to because I want to see what happens next. All right. <laughs> Me too. Um, well, it does kind of extend and continue into there. Uh, speaking of extending and continuing, if you want to uh, keep talking about stuff that we talked about here on the show right now, why not uh, give us a shout on social media like Twitter? We're at Star Wars Minute and Instagram. We're at the Star Wars Minute. Ken, put your hands up so we can put your Twitter. There you go. There you go. There you go. Um, Facebook, go to StarWarsMinute.com slash Facebook to get to the Star Wars Minute Listener Society on Facebook. Um, we just started a, a TikTok, but I don't think there's anything on it yet. Um, but uh, if you want to follow us there, encourage us to do something. Who knows? I hear the kids are hanging out there. So we, we are at the Star Wars Minute on TikTok. Because guess what? Somebody else is Star Wars Minute on TikTok. And um, we are the Star Wars We're the Wars Star Wars Minute. Make you, maybe you could be Star Wars Explained on TikTok. Huh. Oh. <laughs> um, I wonder, did, well, well, we'll go see if Alex has a TikTok. Not you, Alex. Um, but all that being said, hopefully you'll join us back here tomorrow for another episode of the Star Wars Minute. Star Wars Minute.